Praise the Lord. We say Baba. Lose him and let him go. I came to announce to you tonight that you are loosed already. Every chain, every shackle, every bondage, anything, everything that binds you, you are loosed tonight in Jesus' name. Father, well, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your purpose. Thank you for your plan. Thank you for everything you are going to do tonight. Lord, I pray that power that says everyone free will be manifested tonight in Jesus' name. Free from sin. Free from Satan. Free from sickness. See, free from every form and every kind of bondage in every life tonight in Jesus name you've done it before you're doing it again for everyone thank you Lord in Jesus name we pray God bless you you can see them we're coming to Acts of the Apostles chapter 16 and I'm reading from verse 23 and when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. And then in verse 24, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison. And made their feet fast in the stocks. Verse 25. And at midnight of their suffering. At the midnight of their sorrow. At the midnight their feet in stocks. At the midnight with all the chains and the shackles binding them. And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed. No grumbling, no complaint, no murmuring, no question. Why me? Why did this happen? It's there, it's there. What you need is solution. All the why, all the how, all the why is it me? I've been going through life and look at what I have now, all that. Let's stop all that, push all that aside. No complaint tonight. There will be kill. There is no murmuring tonight. There will be miracle. And there is no discussion or debate tonight. There will be deliverance in Jesus name. At midnight Paul and Silas prayed. And sent praises unto God. And the prisoners had them. Look at verse 26. And suddenly. Your miracle will come. And suddenly, your deliverance will come. And suddenly, healing tonight in Jesus' name. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaking. The foundation of your prison was shaking tonight. And immediately, all the doors were open. Doors are open to you now. Every door that has been closed in your life, your family, your profession, in your desires, all those doors, they are open tonight in Jesus' name. Look at this last line. This is where we are going. And everyone's bands were loosed. 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 All your bands loose tonight in Jesus' name. I come to talk to you tonight on the prayer that makes everyone's bands loose. No exception. On the right, on the left, at the back, in front, online, everywhere. No exception. Everyone's bands loose. The sick. 
the tormented, the traumatized, the one that is seeking mind, seeking the brain, seeking the soul, seeking the body, no exception tonight, everyone's bands loosed. The one tied by legal powers, the one tied by occultic power, and the one tied by physical power, and the people tied by personal, uh, personal choice. Everyone, no exception tonight, everyone's bands loosed. The prayer that makes everyone's bands loose. Three things we're looking at. Number one, we're looking at the prayer. Number two, we're looking at the praises. Number three, we're looking at the promise. Number one is the prayer of the righteous that loses every one's bands. The prayer of the righteous tonight that loses every one's bands. Number two, the praises of the, rede of the redeemed that lose from every bondage. Every bondage in your life, tonight, you are loosed. Amen. <laughs> Number three, is the promise to the repentant that light breeds everyone who believes the promise of the, to the repentant. It says that light breeds everyone that believes number one look at number one number one is the prayer of the righteous that loses everyone's bands now when we read the bible we should look at what is this sometimes it's too good to be true sometimes it's unexpected unprecedented and because of that we leave that and we're still following our thoughts we're still following our tradition we're still following our past history but let there be a new sight tonight a new understanding tonight and a new believing tonight and you're free in jesus name number one is the prayer of the righteous that loses everyone's, everyone's, everyone's band. We're looking at Acts again, chapter 16. I'm reading from that verse 23. It says, And when they had laid many stripes on them, they had stripes, they had wounds, they had pain, and they had plague, they had sickness because they had laid many strides upon them here we are we've been going through life and as we look at you know children even the government provides hospital for children why from infancy we have stripes upon us and then we become teenagers and how many teenagers and just people be dreading we have strives it's all through life and then we pass out of school and our certificate will not tell does not have the authority whatever the degree first class certificate does not have any authority over strive over sickness to say I'm a graduate because I'm a graduate. No, life does not work that way. The graduate certificate, BSc, BA, whatever, it does not shield us from the strives of the world. And now we're working and we're managers, we're directors, we're highly placed, and we get big, big money at the end of the month. And the big money does not shield us from the strives in this world everyone that passes through the world except to discover the secret of the one by whose stripes were healed everyone has the many stripes many of many colors of many shape of many of many, many directions and they come from here they come from there not only paul and silas we have many stripes upon us. And it says they cast them into prison. Now you understand that Paul and Silas were to be on the go. They were to be on the move. They were to be progressing from city to city. Now all that progress is taught because they cast them 
into prison and they bound them. And it says they charged the Philippian jailer to keep them safely. I about what we're to do tomorrow. Keep them safely. I about the progress in our lives. Keep them, uh, keep them safely in life. We have dreams. We have intentions. And we have the kind of the place we want to go. And we even have the strategy to get us there. But the people of the world in authority, not only authority over the ground, authority over the streets, authority over the buildings, they want to have authority, total authority over us. I have a dream. They say, what's my concern with that? I want to make progress. What's my concern with that? And then you are shut up. And that's why Christ has come. That every prison tonight will be opened. Yeah. And all the places, the people of the world, they put you there so that you will not get to where you are going. I say, on your life, Satan is a liar. I say on your life, the world is a liar. And if they think you will be in that prison for long, for life, and you will not achieve what you are created for, I call them liars. I say you are coming out of that prison. You are coming out of that bondage. Look at verse 24. In verse 24 it says, who were having received such charge. Now, the jailer had not met Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas did not offend him, but he had a charge, a command. They said, don't ask us what he did. Don't ask us why. All we want is that it should bind them. And keep them safe in there. They must not go out. They are prisoners. What did they do? Don't ask questions. Why are we treating them like that? Don't ask questions. You know, Satan hands over many people to the jailer. To the one that will hold them there. And those people cannot ask Satan what has he done? Don't ask question. Keep him. He must not pro make progress. Watch for how long? Don't ask that question. Keep him because he must not go beyond the limitation we put on him. What are we going to do? When they hand you over to the powers that be, when they hand you over to the dark powers, to the occultic powers, when they hand you over to the people that walk in night, and they walk with this and that, and there you are. And they lock the door. Your mother cannot come, your father cannot come, your friends cannot come, nobody can visit you. You are there at their mercy. But no, 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 no. No, no. You are delivered in Jesus' name. Hey, look at this. And he made their feet fast in the stocks. He locked up their feet. And there was no key that could open that padlock. How could they even find key? They were there. And they were so locked up there. The doors were locked. The stocks were lost. The chains were locked. And there was no way they could go out and go and buy anything. What would they be looking at? They were there. They were there. But when heaven says no to the plan of the devil, Satan will be the fool and you will be the wise. Look at verse 25. In verse 25, and at midnight, now you begin to think, what should we do? Here I am Paul, here I am Silas, and here we are. And the place is so dark. And they didn't give them any light. They want to treat them as the worst offenders on earth. And then, if you were there, what would you have done? Maybe you'll be crying. Paul did not cry. You'll not cry again. Maybe you'll be regretting. Why did I believe in Christ? 
And why did I cast out that spirit of divination? I was trying to help her. I was trying to help their family. And look at where it has landed me. And some people will say, if I come out of this place, I will never preach again. No, you will preach again. You will preach again. Why do tests and trials come in our lives? The test came so that you will have testimony. Why do problems come in our lives? The problem came so that you can have power manifestation. It's not there so that you'll be regretting forever and ever. And Paul and Silas knew that. And Paul and Silas prayed. Say, pray. You know, as some people after hearing the message before the prayer, they run away. Today, you will not run away. Because we're going to pray tonight. And the prayer tonight will set you free. Will liberate you. Will destroy all the powers of darkness in your life in Jesus' name. Because, you know, we're not only here to preach. We're here so that we'll fulfill what the Lord had said. Lose him and let him go. That's why if until that happens, stay where you are. Miracle is coming. Yeah. Healing is coming. Deliverance is coming. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners Hurt them. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, and suddenly they had not finished the prayer. And suddenly, I said they had not finished the prayer. Suddenly, your miracle will come to you. Yeah. Well, having a crusade, she crusade like this in Lagos some years ago. And many people were there, just like tonight. And there was a boy there. The mother brought the boy. The problem was, the boy had no bone in one of the legs. Just flesh, like rubber. And the boy, he had one good leg. And then the other leg, no bones at all. From the hip to the, to the ankle. No bone. And he, used, he was using one other stick. And he'll wind that rubber uh, leg on uh, the stick. And then we were praying, praying, praying. We had not even finished the prayer. We had not said, in Jesus' name, I pray. We have not said the final amen. And there was shout. And the mother came out dancing. Uh, was still praying. And then when we eventually opened our eyes, what happened? Suddenly, bone was created in that fleshly leg. And the boy started walking majestically because suddenly a miracle happened. Suddenly, a miracle happens to you today. And it says, suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaking. And immediately, somebody shout immediately. Immediately, all the doors were open. All the doors. All the doors. The door to the west, to the east, to the south, to the north. The door in every direction. All the doors that were there that had been lodged close so that nobody will go out all the doors were open and it says every one's bands were loose every one's bands what does everyone mean are you there are you part of everyone you're loose tonight in jesus name before i go to point number two Everyone's bands were loose. Everyone. The men, the women, the young, the old, the ones who have been there for a long time, and the ones who just came. Everyone's bands loosed. 
my submission to you is although their bands were loose they didn't act it out they didn't act like that they stayed there and when the philippian jailer came up and he thought everyone would have done the normal thing because they were all loose they all remained there the philippian jailer wanted to kill himself and paul said hold it they are all there their bands were loosed. They were all there. Their chains were broken. They are all there. And everything that tied them down and stuck them down, everything taken away, and they were still all there. How many people, after we pray and we say the final amen, and power comes from heaven, and they are loosed, they still sit there on the wheelchair. And they're loose. They're still holding on to their crutches. They're loose and they're still holding on to their ear, ear, whatever, uh, you know, aid for their ears. They're loose. And they're still holding on to the things they're loose from. Tonight, when you are loose, you get up. Yeah. You will walk. Yeah. You will run. I was seeing uh, it you we used to call the place uh, the country Zaire and uh, it's the Democratic Republic of Congo now we're having a crusade there at the stadium and there was a woman there that uh, had HIV AIDS she was like skeleton and she was there and we prayed after the prayer Everybody said, Amen. The woman was just lying there. And then after, as the people were going, no usher went there, no preacher went there. I did not go there. Already we have released the power. And the woman was loose. All of a sudden, when he saw the people were going, he looked here and there. He got up from that bed. And then he started walking. And he started running because at the mention of the name of Jesus, everyone's bands will be loosed. All you need to do is get up. You will get up. All you need to do is walk. You will walk. All you need to do is begin to run and the power of the Lord will sustain you in Jesus' name. At the prayer of the righteous mentioning the name of jesus everyone's bands were loosed it's happening tonight look at james chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 15 james chapter 5 reading from verse 15 and the prayer of faith shall save the sick when we pray here what kind of prayer do you think we're praying? Prayer of faith or prayer of unbelief? Say it aloud. Uh -huh. And it says the prayer of faith never fails. The prayer of faith shall save the sick, heal the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. Amen. As the Lord raises you up, you're not holding on to the edges of the wheelchair anymore. Lose that and come up. Because the Lord will raise you up. And if he had committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Your sins will be forgiven tonight. All the evil things you have done. Every evil thing, whether man knows it or not, Every evil thing, every sinful action that is recorded in heaven against your name, everything is forgiven tonight. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, confess your faults one to another. When you stand up there and, you know, you have any, any guilt on your life, say, Lord, I'm sorry. And if I need to go and say sorry to the person I offended, I'll say sorry because now with that word sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry for that. Your salvation is guaranteed in Jesus' name. And then it says that if 
that you pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer. The effectual fervent prayer. We pray each in the night like Paul and Silas. Or we pray each in the afternoon like Paul and Silas. Or we pray in the morning. It says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Availeth much. My prayer for you tonight will avail much. Deep sickness, there will be a deeper healing. Great sickness, there will be a greater healing. Because the prayer of the righteous availeth much. We're coming to point number two now. Point number two, the praises of the redeemed that loose from every bondage every bondage let's come back to that acts chapter 16 verse 25 and at midnight paul and silas prayed and sang praises unto god and the prisoners heard them once you're here the prisoners heard them the captives heard them the sick at them the incarcerated heard them they heard the prayer they heard the praises and think about that when do we praise god we praise god at all times we praise god before the manifestation we praise God at the time of the manifestation. We praise God after the manifestation. Why do we praise God before the manifestation? We're praising God because we know what he will do. We're saying, God, you can never fail. And today you will not fail. In my case, in your case, he will not fail. If you had been crying and shedding tears before you came to the crusade, the moment you enter, your tears will turn you to joy. And your sorrow will turn to gladness. No sadness anymore and no sorrow anymore and no weeping or crying anymore. But who have not prayed, yes, I know God is a faithful God. I am praising God for what I know he will do. Before the manifestation, we're praising God. In the middle of the manifestation, we're praising God. Why? Because of what he is doing. First, because of what he will do. That's why we're praising God. That's why we're happy. That's why we know everyone's bands lose. And because I know I am part of that, everyone, and my bands are loose today, even before the manifestation, I'm praising God. In the middle of the manifestation, there was an earthquake. And then it says, it so happened that everyone's bands were loose. I'm praising God while I'm seeing that manifestation is taking place. I'm feeling strength in my backbone. I'm feeling strength in my arm that I couldn't stretch before. I'm feeling light coming into my eyes. I'm in the middle of the manifestation and I'm feeling the joy in my heart that God is manifesting it now. That's why I'm praising the Lord before the manifestation you praise the Lord in the middle of the manifestation you are praising the Lord and then uh, when you come to the other side now you are no more in the wheelchair you are standing now you are no more under the power and the help of the crutches the crutches are over there and they are thrown away and you are standing and you are walking like me I said you are standing and walking like me. Now that it has taken place, we keep on praising the Lord. That's why we come out and we're coming out. We're not coming out as if we have to come out there. I want to talk to the you know crowd there. We're so happy we have something to tell the crowd. We're so happy we have a testimony to give before, during, and after. We praise the Lord. That's why Paul and Silas sang, Praise unto God. And the prisoners 
hurt them. Look at verse 26. And it says, suddenly, suddenly, suddenly. It's while you are singing those praises. Suddenly, they'll say, great earthquake. If you had great imprisonment, great earthquake will come and blow everything away in Jesus' name. You have a great uh, problem. Great earthquakes will come. And all those great problems tonight, they're blown away from your life. In Jesus' name. It says so that, so that, so that the foundations in the plural, the foundations of the prison were shaking. They're shaking already. I said they are shaking already. The foundation of where your bondage came from is shaking already. The foundation of where the curse came from is shaking already. The foundation of that cancer is shaking already. The foundation of that impossible situation is shaking already. And then it says, and immediately... And immediately, and immediately, all the doors were open. The doors, what does that mean? The door over here to my right, where the square members are, the doors are open. The doors over there where our children are from the Deep Life High School, the doors are now open. The doors in my front and the doors on this side here, all the doors are now open. The doors at the back, anywhere you are, the doors are open in Jesus' name. On the platform here, to my left, to my right, we have ministers, professionals, dignitaries, government officials. Here on the platform, the doors are now open. It says, and immediately, immediately, okay, I'm here today. I'll come back tomorrow. And no, not tomorrow. It's cash and carry. Cash and carry. You will carry miracles out of this place tonight in Jesus' name. And it says, everyone's burns will lose. I feel it. I feel it as I'm here. I sense it as I'm here. In my spirit, in my spirit, I see you there. And I see your burns loosed. I see your chains broken. I see those blind I can see. I can see there spiritually that your blind eyes are open in Jesus' name. I can see it. Look at that man. Look at that. Or, uh, you know, in Onicha some years ago. And they were having, you know, miracle night. Miracle night. And they brought this man. They changed the hands. And they put padlock. And they changed the feet. And they put padlock. Why? The man was insane. The man had real powerful demons tormenting him. And they brought him there. Our state overseer there. He's still the state, state overseer in Imo State now. He will remember. And as they brought uh, that uh, person, all changed up. And while I was preaching, I didn't see him in the physical. I saw him in the spiritual. And I knew that his yoke was going to be broken that night. And then we prayed. And after the prayer, we opened our eyes. And the man said, why do they put chains on my hand? And then he said, come and remove your chain. And the people came, they opened the padlock, and they opened, uh, and they removed the chain. He said, I about my leg. And they removed the chains on the legs. And the man walked out to give testimony. And that man, I still remember, Queen's English. The man spoke perfect English. And he said, this happened, that happened, but now I am free. It's your turn tonight. I said it's your turn tonight. You are free in Jesus' name. And it says, 
as they praise the Lord that all the doors were open and everyone's bands loosed. That's me. That's me. You're free tonight in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 22, and I'm reading from verse 3. Psalm 22, verse 3. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. When you are praising the Lord from your heart, and you forget about sickness, you forget about sin, you forget about shackles, when you are praising the Lord from the depth of your heart, the Almighty comes from heaven. He inhabits the praises of his children. And as we are shouting with joy, with happiness, with expectation, expecting manifestation, God is here now. He inhabits the praises, the joy, the happiness, the gladness of his people. There's no way, there's no way you'll carry sickness out of this place tonight. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, the promise to the repentant that liberates, that, um, to the repentant that liberates everyone who believes. I believe. I believe. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 30. Acts, chapter 16, verse 30. And he brought them out, the Philippian jailer. The one that put bands on their feet, now he saw that his bands were not approved of God. He saw that the, uh, the bands and the stock and the yoke, he put on them he himself, the yoke maker, the yoke placer, who placed the yoke there. He saw what he put on them, God removed. What he put on you, God will remove. And eventually, he himself, he came, he said, sirs, he called them sir. He honored them. He respected them. Your enemies that put yokes on you. When they see now, you're free. They look at you from the back. They look at you from the sides. They run to the front. They look at you and they see that you're walking. No sickness. No plague. No chase. Free. Your brain free. Your eyes free. Your ears free. Your feet free. And they look at you. They say, that's the man. That's the woman. I bound him. I bound her. But she is free. Then they will say, sir. They will call you sir. They will say, madam. They'll call you madam. They will not look down at you anymore because a power higher than their power, a high power greater than their power has come to set you free. What must I do to be saved? You have something I don't have. You have salvation, which I don't have. I want to have what you have. Your enemies will come. They will say, I see a kind of joy in your life I've never seen anywhere. What do I do? That I may have the joy of salvation like you have. Amen. Amen. Your enemies will envy you. What must I do to be saved? Look at verse 31. They said, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And thou shalt be saved. And thou shalt be saved. Now, they went beyond the question, What must I do to be saved? They said, In fact, you will be saved and your household will be saved. Your brother will be saved. Your sister will be saved. Your mother will be saved. 
Your daddy will be saved. They said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved and thine house. Amen. Let me show you something. In this same chapter, verse 35, now, verse 35, verse 35, it says in verse 35, and when it was day, remember that that opening of the doors in the prison happened in the night. At midnight, they prayed and they sang praises to God. And remember, all the things that had happened happened in the night and when it was now morning the magistrate sent to the sergeant they sent the sergeant saying let those men go let those men go they didn't have to do any other thing the lord has done everything for you Paul and Silas prayed and they sang praises to the Lord and the prison doors were open and the foundations of the prison shaking and everyone's bands loosed and while did Paul and Silas still remain there because they were to give salvation, the word of salvation, the message of salvation to the Philippian jailer himself and to his household and after that when they were minding their business and when they knew that everything was over, that all your problems are over, and they knew that all the chains were broken, and without asking anything, without paying any money, without consulting with anybody, the magistrates on their own, the sin in their heart, the kind of, uh, you know, punishment where we'll punish them they will realize that they never preach christ or pray in the name of christ anymore the chain in their own mind was also loose and the same sergeant saying let those men go look at verse 36 in verse 36 and the keeper of the prison told saying to Paul, the magistrates have sent to let you go. And I came to announce to you, all the powers that bound you, they have now realized that they cannot do anything against what Christ has fi finished at Calvary. And then I'm sent to you now, like the sergeants, like the majestic power of God from heaven has now sent me to tell you, now you can go free. Now your chains are broken. Now the shackles are broken. The search, the magistrate have sent to let you go. Now therefore, depart and go in peace. What do you say there? Depart and go in peace. Peace in your heart. Peace in your life. Sickness gone. Sin forgiven. Power broken. Manifestation in your life. Now brother, you can go free. Sister, now you can go free. Even the magistrates have said, they have said there is no reason to keep you in that prison anymore. Since heaven has come and has loosed you and you are free, we also agree, go out free. Yeah. Who is free tonight? I said who is free tonight? You're free in Jesus' name. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed closed. He'll free you from the chain of sinfulness. You didn't say amen to that one. He'll forgive your sin. He'll take guilt away from you. He'll take condemnation away from you. He will give you the salvation of the Lord. Anywhere you are, not sin, the sincere now, there's a great miracle salvation moment in your life. 
that you know you're a sinner and you want Christ, a redeemer, our Lord, the one that comes suddenly and immediately and it takes away the body and the load and the imprisonment of sin in our lives. You raise up your hand. That's what I want. That's what I want. I want that forgiveness. I want that salvation. I want that release from the overpowering sin in my life. Raise up that hand. God bless you. God bless you. And online, do the same thing because today you're free from the stocks and the chains and the fetters of sin or sinfulness. Raise up the hand. As you are raising up the hand, please stand up. Please stand up and say, yes, I am the man. I am the woman. The prison doors of sin already open and all the yokes are broken and the powerlessness I had before. I couldn't overcome before. Now the powerlessness is gone. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Stand up wherever you are. I am praying now at the end of the prayer when you hear the mention of the name of Jesus, salvation has entered. I said salvation has entered. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, well, thank you. What a great God you are, a loving God, you are a compassionate God you are, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lord, I pray for everyone, everyone here, everyone online, raising up their hands now and wanting the salvation of the Lord. Save them in Jesus' name. Break the power of sin from their lives. Set them free. Let them go in peace. No unbelief, no torment, no regrets in life, no condemnation. Set them free to go in the peace of your salvation in Jesus' name. You are saved. By the sacrifice of Christ, you are saved. By the power of our redeeming Christ, you are saved in Jesus' name. Joy in your heart. Peace in your soul. Power in you as a new creature. Go in peace and live free from the sins of the past in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We know you've done it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. Our moderating overseer will come now and lead us in this uh, section. Then I'll be coming back for every yoke of sickness, of infirmity, and of demon possession to be taken away from every life tonight. God bless you. Congratulations for your new found faith in Christ. The counselors will move everywhere now to take their particulars. Make sure you write in capital letters the addresses. Spread yourself all over. We can move behind With your new fan faith, no more telling lies, give them the correct address. Those movies, please stand still. The prayer of the man of God will soon come. Let's do that fast. If you are watching online, you give your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening. There is a link below your player. Click it 
and fill the form so we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. Also, if you are listening to via the radio or television, you just gave your life to Christ. Send your name, phone number, your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to 234-915-444-9263. I repeat again, plus 234-915-444-9263. There will be a special meeting. Lunch hour with Jesus. For all those who gave their lives to Jesus tomorrow by 3 p.m. at the same venue. Just behind. The convert rally there will be a special online banquet. All those watching online who gave their lives to Christ on Sunday, 5th November 2023. More details about this will be sent to you. Our pastor will be delighted to have you join this special banquet. Thanks. Make yourself available, and the Lord will bless you. Bene Believers Banquet on Sunday, 5th November, 2023, at Deeper Life Bible Church, 153 Ekewon Road, Bini City, time 3 p.m., Announcement after miracle prayer during testimony. If you just receive your miracle, please share your testimony with us via the WhatsApp number being displayed or testimony link on the screen. You can also record a video of your testimony and share with us via WhatsApp and Telegram. Cancel us. If you're true, you signify. Those by my left hand side, if you're true, you wave the flag up. Wave the flag up. Make sure we move around. There are people at the fence. We'll go there also. At the middle, if you are finished, wave the, wave the flag up. Let me see. Let's be fast. Make sure the right thing is done. Thank God for those who are preparing. Tonight, the heaven will open for you. By my right hand side, if you are finished, wave, wave the flag up. Please make sure you attend to them. Those are the very back. 
Make sure you attend to the people. Now, by my left hand side, if you are finished, wave the flag up. By my right hand, okay. Okay. In the middle here, if you are finished, wave the flag. Let me see. Okay, thank you. By my left hand side, okay. At the very back, if you are finished, wave the flag and let me see. God bless you. Get ready now. The counselors, remain where you are. Remain where you are. You will see miracle tonight. Get ready now. Counselors, stand by them. Just stay where you are. As our pastor will be coming, catch your miracle. Amen. Let's rise up for prayer now. Remember, the prison doors are opened already. Remember, the foundations of your prison, they're shaking already. And remember that all your bands are loosed. I told you about those people. The bands were loosed, everyone. Surprisingly, they sat down there and they stayed there until the jailer, the one that put them in prison or held them in the prison until he woke up. You will escape. You will get up. Wheelchair, you'll discard that wheelchair. Walking stick, you'll throw away the crutches. And your blind eyes, what will happen tonight? Open. Deaf ears, what happens tonight? Open. And the insanity, madness, what will happen tonight? Lose him. Let him go. Lose her. Let her go. Lose them. Let them go. Where are you? Raise up one hand and lay the other hand where you have the challenge. And you are praising God tonight. You are praising God tonight. 
Father, in Jesus' name. We know the foundations of the prison are shaking already. We know all the doors of the prison, they are opened already. We know that all the chains, all the shackles, all the stocks, they are removed already. Your people are loose in Jesus' name. Sickness, you have no business there on anybody. Therefore, I command, come out in Jesus' name. Bring problem, insanity, madness, demon. You don't have any business there anymore. I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Pain in your joints. Pain in your tummy, pain at your back, pain at your waist, pain inside, inside the bone. You have no business there anymore. Come out in Jesus' name. <laughs> Cancer, this my daughter, that my son is not your property. You are not given any chance to remain in that body. They are loosed already. Cancer, come out in Jesus' name. Also, come out in Jesus' name. HIV AIDS or any other disease that imprisons the people of God. One by one, to my right, in my front, at my left over there. Hey, look at that. At the back, in the middle, every form of sickness, come out in Jesus' name. Online. Praise the Lord. You are giving testimony tonight. I command that every challenge, every yoke, every demon, everything the devil, the enemy has put there, called sickness, called disease, called infirmity, be removed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray everywhere, blind eyes be opened, deaf ears be unstopped, dumb tongues speak out. Incurable disease vanish away. Lord, confirm the miracle. Confirm the manifestation. Lord, I pray it is done. It is done. Here, everywhere, it is done. For everyone without exception. Miracle done in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody once again will shout. They prayed and sang praises unto the Lord. Before the miracle, they praised the Lord because they knew it was coming. In the midst of the miracle, they praised the Lord. They know it is happening. And then after the miracle, as now we finish the prayer, we we'll praise the Lord because we know you are loosed in Jesus' name. <laughs>